Whenever you make a custom character, making sure that custom character has really good physics are extremely important. If your game is about movement, something like Mario or Sonic, and your controls are in any way janky or inconsistent, or just don't feel good at all, your game is going to suck. Today, I'm gonna to show you how you set up a moving ball with a maximum velocity. Well, Loop, Bob and Alice already told me how to put a stick into a moving box. Why do I need you? Well, let's test that out. Here, this moving sphere is in acceleration mode. And so I'm just gonna have a little stick. Uh, and so we yoed ourselves right off the game map. Huh? You're saying just use a map to, you know, ramp down the acceleration? All right, well now I have much finer control over his speed, but how about the brakes? Uh, nope. And what if I need to go through a timed obstacle? To slower my acceleration, it's a lot harder to ramp up speed to get through it. In general, lowering your acceleration makes it a lot easier to control your speed, but also means you're really slow to react to stuff. But in general, it's really hard to control a ball in acceleration mode that does not have a max speed. What if we put the moving ball in speed mode and then map up the speed to be times 10? So now the sphere has a maximum speed of 10. Well, now you see that it jerks around pretty quickly. That is not really a good feeling character. He's really responsive. He turns on a dime, but that's, that's pretty bad. The goal for today is to make a ball that takes a little bit of time to ramp up to speed. How long? As long as you want. The thing is that it's a lot easier and fluid to control an object when it's in acceleration mode so it can ramp up to a maximum speed. We can control that speed and the speed doesn't just spiral out of control and then we lose the ball right off the map. Today, I'll show you how to code four different types of moving balls. And obviously, you can attach them to another player character in order to add on to a growing physics engine however you want. The main models I'll show you are 1D motion and 2D motion, as well as a block that will decelerate naturally back to rest and a block that will not decelerate back to rest. Just before we start, I'm gonna use this block of code to be able to show me the speed and acceleration of whatever ball I'm talking about. One last detail before I start. So usually in 2D and 3D levels, you'll have something like a jump button that controls an extra axis. So in a 3D platformer, we'll be programming something like 2D motion, which is like Mario's ground velocity. And separately from that, he can have his own jump. So in general, you'll use a 1D motion for a 2D level with a character that can jump, and you'll use 2D motion for something like a side scroller in 2D or for a 3D platformer. All right, so without further ado, first, a block that moves in 1D back and forth, and he has a maximum velocity. And just to be clear, whenever you're programming a physics engine, it's really important to also check that it behaves well with walls. I'm not gonna explain too much why here, but you've been warned. This 1D motion will decelerate back to rest whenever I let go of the stick. So there, when I let go, back to zero, smoothly. All the blocks in this video are going to be in acceleration mode. So how do I do this? In 1D, we're gonna do something very, very simple. We're just gonna take the stick minus your current X velocity. Then we'll feed this difference straight into the X acceleration port. Just those three nodons is really all you need to define this sort of motion. The thing is that we also wanna be able to customize this, all right? Like you wanna be able to change what the maximum speed is and what the acceleration up to that speed is. So what am I doing? The stick here goes between negative one and positive one. So what I'm gonna do is map the speed to divide it by 10. That way the speed vector that resists the stick and brings us back to rest will only really be able to stop the stick fully when we're at a top speed, something close to roughly 10. In practice, the top speed is gonna be a little bit less than this, but it's close enough for this method. The idea is that when we're at the top speed, this will be giving us a one or negative one, depending on direction, and that will completely nullify whatever you're doing with the stick. So an X speed of 10 gets divided by 10 to a one, that gives us a complete nullification of the stick input if it would try to go in that same positive x direction. This gives us an acceleration that scales with how hard we're pressing the stick and also with our current speed. With this method, you'll also find that you can just decelerate by hitting the stick a little bit less. So here, my stick is at the max. Then I ease off on the stick halfway through and my velocity drops to match. In general, this is actually a really good one-dimensional control scheme. The last customization detail is this map, which affects how fast we are going to accelerate to that velocity. Here, I have range restriction enabled so that we are capping how fast we can move. Of course, if I instead multiply by five, now my block will reach its top speed much, much more quickly. 
here it can turn pretty fast. How fast do you want to go? As fast as you want, just change the number. I can do the opposite thing in that map where I divide by five. And now you see that my block is a lot more sluggish. If you're not careful with this, the friction on, against the floor can actually be a pretty big detriment. So just be careful. But in general, for the low, low price of five nodons, this gives you a pretty solid control scheme that you can kind of do whatever you want with. Next, I want to program one dimensional motion that when I let go of the control stick, it just kind of like keeps going. Here, there's always a little bit of downward acceleration. So the game will always kind of put some resistance on the ball so that when you let go of the control stick, it will always slowly come back down. But the core idea here is that when you let go of the control stick, the ball doesn't really come back to rest. It just kind of keeps going. In general, this can be pretty good if you want more of a space-like feeling to it. But in general, this will be substantially more complicated to program. So here, I'll walk you through it. Here's the general idea. Here's a little number line for the speed. It, the speed can go between the negative max speed and the positive max speed. Whenever our speed is anywhere in this good range, we don't want to do anything to it. But whenever our speed is currently at the maximum, we need to send a speed into our acceleration that resists, that brings us back to zero. But it doesn't just bring us back to zero. It needs to stop and let us stay somewhere near the max speed. So this vector is only allowed to kick in over here. The problem is that if we use a comparison node on, where like we check is speed greater than max, what we're gonna get is a very choppy motion where when your speed is currently around here, you're gonna constantly accelerate above and below, which is gonna kind of give you the feeling of uh, rush hour traffic where you're just like stop and go, stop and go. Just trust me on this, it's absolutely terrible. So what we need to do is not just suddenly apply a very large backwards correction vector. We need a correction vector that gives us a small correction if we're very close a bigger correction if we're kind of far, and a huge correction if we're very, very far from the max speed. This way we can smoothly approach that top speed. To do this, I'm gonna use one special feature of the map node on. The map node on here, I get zero to five, zero to five. So this map node on actually does nothing, right? It just multiplies by one, but because I'm using range restriction, I can make sure that it ignores all negative values. In this way, this is how I'm gonna use the map node on as a makeshift comparison node on. First, I'm gonna take my X velocity and I'm gonna take an absolute value because it could be plus or minus X velocity. Then I'm gonna subtract five, where five is my top speed. So if I'm currently under the top speed, I'm gonna be passing in a negative number into the map. And the map node on is programmed to completely ignore that. It will give you a zero if you're below the top speed. The way to think about it is that this map node on is basically a comparison statement. It tells you how much above your top speed are you. Separately, here I'm gonna divide the speed by its absolute value. So this just gives me the sign. So it's plus one if I'm positive speed and minus one if I'm negative speed. Then this sign will basically keep that information of are we in going in positive X or negative X? Then we'll multiply them together. So we get a number that is more positive, even bigger if we are above the maximum X limit and is even more negative if we're even more below the negative x limit. Then, just like before, I'm gonna take the difference. Stick minus speed correction. And that goes into the moving objects export. Obviously, we have this map again to control our acceleration. So let's see what that looks like. Here, you see that I put in a top speed of five, but because that map takes one extra point in order to fully nullify the stick node on, my top speed is actually six. But overall, everything is just fine. You'll also notice a slight inconsistency here. When I let go of the stick when I'm at top speed, you see that my speed goes straight from 5.9 to roughly 4.9. And that's because it's no longer resisting the stick. This is gonna be a slight bit of inconsistency with this setup. However, it should generally give you something that's mostly smooth. I know 2D is gonna scare you because obviously it's gonna be more complicated, but honestly, it was a lot easier for me to define everything and code everything up first in 2D and then scale it down because conceptually it's just a lot harder to do in 1D. Here, let's plot the velocity of the block in 2D. We want to program a maximum speed. So we have, as a part of that, our velocity in X and the velocity in the Y. What we want to do is make sure that this velocity stays less than the maximum velocity. In 2D, this is represented by this very poorly drawn circle. First, let's talk about the easy case of the one that naturally decelerates to rest whenever you let go of the stick. Because we're subtracting the speed from the stick in 1D, what we're doing is we're subtracting the speed vector straight there. So if we're very close to the max speed, we're subtracting a very big vector. 
In 1D, we're taking the speed vector, which is really just one number, divided by the maximum speed and subtracting that out. So what happens is that we are basically subtracting a really big vector when we're very close to the max speed, and we're subtracting a very small vector when we are not so close to the max speed. But remember that this vector has two things going on it. You have the direction of the vector, in 1D that's just whether it's plus or minus, and you have the magnitude of how long that vector is. We are always applying a corrective speed that points right back to the origin, right back to zero speed, because we want to go to rest when we let go of the stick. Second is that the size of the vector needs to become bigger and bigger and bigger as we get closer to the max speed. That's basically the whole game plan. Just like before, here we just take the speed vector, x and y, and divide by this top speed that we want. The idea before is when the speed is at the max, that's a value of 1, which completely nullifies the stick input. Here, instead, it's a vector that maxes out at a length of 1. There's an additional complication here, which is now we need to basically add the stick vector to the speed vector. So now we have to actually take the stick inputs and express that as a vector. So just like before, we take the stick vector, stick x, stick y, minus the speed x and the speed y, where the speed has been scaled by the top speed. Then I'm going to multiply that to scale by acceleration. So here, for example, I have an acceleration of 0.1 and a top speed of 5. That's a little bit sluggish, isn't it? Let's crank that up to 2. Now here we see that the ball is pretty responsive. Even a little bit too responsive. How about an acceleration of 0.5? Yeah, that actually feels pretty good. What feels good for me might not feel good for your game. Remember to just keep in mind, like, you can just change up the numbers. Overall, the 2D case isn't really that bad. Okay, let's prepare for the very last one. This is gonna be a moving ball that goes up to a top speed and it just holds it there if you let go. The idea here is that whenever we get into a speed that's outside of this max speed circle, then we're gonna have to react to that and correct our speed to send us back. This means we need to give ourselves a speed vector that goes backwards. Furthermore, I'm gonna try to do this smoothly at first. So we're gonna use a math so that the farther we are away, we get a big correction. And if we're very close, we have a smaller correction. Here is roughly what that looks like. And here's the code. The stick portion of the code is exactly the same. The only thing that's different is what's going on in the speed vector. So let's look at what's going on in the speed correction. First, I'm gonna split the speed vector's information between how long it is and what direction it's going. For the speed vector's direction, I'm gonna use a combination of a position to angle node on and an angle to position node on. Well here, the x and y speed go in, and the same x and y speed kind of come out, it's in the same direction. The thing is that in between, we lose the length information. So this vector that comes out is in the same direction as the speed vector, but it only has a length of one. Second, I need to get the speed vector's length. So as per usual, x squared plus y squared square root gives us the absolute total speed of the object. Then I subtract the top speed, here, negative five, and then I map it. This map basically only removes negative numbers. Furthermore, the map will give us a correction that scales proportionally to how much farther above the top speed we have accidentally strayed. Then I multiply these two numbers together. So I now have a vector that is in the same direction as my original speed, but now it's proportional to how much farther I am above the maximum speed. Then, just like before, I add my speed correction vector into my stick vector. I scale that by the acceleration that I want, and I feed that x and y acceleration straight into my box. Here we see a ball with the desired physics. So here, when I let go of the control stick, we just keep going out in space. There's a small negative acceleration because that's just how moving objects work. But overall, you see that it does roughly what we want. You see that the moment I let go of the stick, we lose some speed. Just for reference, this is what it looks like when you use a comparison node on, and here is what it looks like in actual gameplay. You see that every time I reach the top speed, there's kind of like a little tug back effect, where it's allowed to kind of slingshot a little bit over the top speed, back and forth, which can give a choppy effect depending on exactly what you set your numbers to. Exactly what movement physics you want are up to you. I personally prefer to have my speed come down just a smidgen when I let go of the stick, even though that isn't exactly what we were going for in this program, it kind of makes sense, and as long as you hold the stick in the maximum direction, then it'll keep its max speed more or less. As per usual, I'll be supplying the sample code in the description and also in the video. Remember that you can connect these moving blocks to characters as well to give whatever custom physics you want. In this scenario, it can be kind of like the workhorse, 
as it's kind of like the main part of the engine that makes your character move around. And exactly how you want that to happen is up to you. That's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you get good use out of this one. If you liked, feel free to subscribe for more content like this and I'll see you around. Bye.